Well, Jane Wells is live in Reno, Nevada with a live test and more on why delivery drones are already here. Jane. Uh, Morgan, they're doing something that has never been done before, flying several commercial drones at once inside a city beyond line of sight, meaning the pilots are eventually not going to see them. But as we look at the video, if the future of drones is in delivery and other things, you have to figure this out. So NASA, as you say, which determines the rules or what aircraft can do, not the FAA, which does the regulations, NASA is in Reno to test out a new type of air traffic management system for drones in specially created flight corridors above downtown. We're testing out all the various technologies that really hasn't been tested out before from collision avoidance, obstacle avoidance, remote identification, and Jane, we're doing this under beyond visual line of sight conditions. The goal is to have people and cargo, larger cargo transported through these uh, larger vehicles in urban airspace. Clear for takeoff. All right, the FAA projects several hundred thousand drones in the air in four years. Goldman Sachs says just the industry to manage these drones will be worth almost a billion dollars by 2025. Companies like Google and Amazon are working with NASA. But there are challenges, guys, as we come back and show you these drones. What happens when communications drops? What, ma what happens if you lose uh, GPS? Uh, what if it's windy? And also things like battery life and public acceptance. A lot to figure out. Jane, this is just the coolest story. Um, a lot of questions here. Uh, certainly we focus on the actual equipment itself, the vehicles that are being developed to make things like package deliveries in the future. But the actual infrastructure in terms of how those drones are working together, talking to each other potentially, how would air traffic management systems for drones be different than what we currently have for airplanes? It's, it's fascinating. And NASA is developing this out of Ames. Airplanes, you have a human pilot talking to a human air traffic controller. That controller gives the plane clearance. There's going to be so many more drones. So the new system will be almost the opposite. All the drones will put in a flight plan into the system. The system will be communicating with each other. And basically, rather than giving you clearance, will tell you where you can't be. So instead of telling the drone where it can go, it'll say you can do that. You just can't be here. It's the opposite of planes. Yeah, th these drones are going to have cameras on them, Jane. What about privacy? What are people saying about that? It is an issue. The mayor of Reno, Reno's been very supportive of this. Uh, the drones eventually are, the system is not supposed to allow you to cache, to keep the images. But we asked a couple people what they thought about it. People here in Reno, here's what they said. I live downtown at the Montage, and I can see them flying out, like right there when I'm enjoying a glass of wine after work on my deck. So that's a little bit weird, but I'm not worried about anything else like that. I mean, if it's going to be for the betterment of our community, I'm all for it. But the way things are being taken care of in today's, I, I'm a little nervous. I got to tell you, I think the biggest issue to figure out, battery life. These drones right here can go for about a half hour. If they're carrying a five pound payload, which is what most of Amazon packages are, they're going to have to have extended battery life to do real deliveries in the future. Amazon drones, by the way, are a lot bigger. Uh, Jane, we know Amazon's got a big presence in Reno. Um, how specific is Reno as a trial market, and how easy is this uh, to be replicated in other cities around the world? We will find out. Reno is an FAA test site. They're very open to it. It's good. They've got, you know, they've got tall buildings. Here's City Hall right next to where this is being tested. You have the high wind going through uh, these buildings, which is a good replication of what can happen downtown. So in many ways, it's a perfect place to test this out. Not too big, but enough variation for testing. Jane, in, in terms of the money, the funding that this would take to roll, roll this out on a national level, any estimates on that? Well, this program from NASA, which will continue through July, it's a five-year, $80 million program. They then hand over their uh, decisions to the FAA, which then comes up with regulations. But there's a lot of parties involved, private and public. These drones, for example, we got one from Utah State University. We got another one out of Poland from a company called ILOT. All of this is costing a lot. It's costing Reno money, which they say Nevada is reimbursing them for. So we're talking millions, tens of millions right now. It could be larger. But Goldman Sachs believes the drone business generally, commercial or otherwise, 
I could end up being a hundred billion dollar business. Uh, we we'll are, see, we are getting, but that's a very big number. Yeah, we're getting all of our drone questions answered this morning, Jane. So how about <laughs> another? Uh, what do you do for a black box in a drone? I mean, when inevitably things go wrong, oh. they're so small. How, how are people going to understand what exactly went wrong and how to prevent it from happening again? This is so interesting. There is a system from Romatech on one of these drones that helps it place, in essence, the black box for the drone. And the new traffic uh, management system, it's almost like a peer-to-peer -peer software that Ames is working on for NASA, where everyone knows where everyone is at a particular time. That's the plan. That's why you need to do testing.